Oh well, YouTubers, been gonna make this video for a while, but you know, um, just never made it. So anyway, today I'm gonna talk about my opinion on um, scrapping old cars in way for newer, more fuel efficient cars. So basically, as far as I can look at the situation, which is, I'm often told I have a pretty stupid way of looking at situations, but anyway, it's a fairly practical way, I think. Um, now, I'll take the Magnum, for example. That particular car has been on the road for 21 years. It only ever uses second-hand parts to keep it on the road. And the only um, fossil or fossil fuels, fossil sources, non-renewable um, products that are put into the car is petrol and oil. So, as you can imagine, you need to put petrol into any car anyway. Um, and if you are to go and buy a new Hyundai Gets, or Toyota Prius, whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, you still need to produce the car. You need to... That's my phone going off. You need to put a whole heap of um, fossil fuels and raw materials into making the car, such as iron ore, petroleum substance, substances, um, to make all the plastic components, such as the dash, the panels, all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of um, products that go into the car itself that are non-renewable and fossil, you know, based from petroleum and other fossil um, fuels and things like that. So already that's outweighing any extra fuel consumption the Magna would have over a Toyota Prius, Prius, whatever you want to call it. Um, my next point is even just transporting the um, new car from Japan, so sticking on a ship and um, importing it to Australia is going to pollute a hell of a lot of you know CO2 emissions, methane, whatever it is that the ship, you know, diesel ship pollutes. Um, so that's using a hell of a lot of fuel, all that sort of stuff. So not only producing it but also transporting it to the country, wrecking your old car, getting that melted down and sent over to China. Um, that's going to use a hell of a lot of energy and natural resources that we don't need to use. If we had to just kept the car on the road for another few years, like the Magna can easily be kept on the road for another five, even ten years if you wanted to, um, with recycled parts from the wreckers. And really, as far as I look at it, the positives that you're going to gain another few kilometres out of every litre, like the Magna, I think, does about nine to ten kilometers per litre which that's fairly conservative driving which you know isn't always my driving approach but anyway we won't go there um, so you're gaining a few kilometers a litre a little bit less petrol um, the way it burns fuel might be a little bit less efficient because it's an old it's a quite an old um, AFI car even though it's more it has got a catalytic converter it has got all that sort of junk so that's the way I look at it. Um, I could waffle on about this for hours, but I think this will do for now, just to get my opinion out there. Because um, I am—I don't admit it often, but I am a sort of environmentalist of a kind. I'm not a you know eco-Nazi, save the whales or that sort of shit. But you got to look at it laterally. Even my mother's V8, which is parked just there, that uses twice the fuel of the Magna. But that to keep that on the road. Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, is a hell of a lot more efficient than producing a brand new car to replace it than having to, you know, dispose of it, melt it down, whatever it may be. So that's just my general opinion. Um, thanks for watching. I better go and see what that on my phone was going off about, although it is like 11 o'clock at night, so I don't really give